Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing well health technology stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Well Health Technologies is a digital telehealth company. The company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada and was founded in 2010. It went public in 2017 and trades on the TSX, Pink Sheets and Deutsche Börse. It operates primary healthcare facilities in Canada and the US. It also has a digital electronic medical records business. The company provides SaaS EMR services to doctors across Canada. It operates as a national telehealth service and as a provider of digital health, billing, and cybersecurity related technology solutions. We're going to look at the ticker that trades on the TSX, so all the numbers in this video are in Canadian dollars. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.4 billion market cap. They're trading at 694 a share and they have 195 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year because they're still growing their business and investing a lot back into it. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and that's negative every year as well. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows 1100% from 6 million up to 66 million. So they're doing an amazing job at growing their top line revenue. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And their gross profit grows a lot each year from 1.7 million up to 27 million. Below that is operating expenses. And since they don't have much gross profit, their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit. So they have negative operating income each year. They paid 1.8 million of interest on their debt. That's the most money they paid in the past four years. Then below that is other income and expenses. This is usually the gains or losses on an asset sale. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative each year since they haven't hit break even yet. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx give you your free cash flow. And they do have negative free cash flow every year. Since they're losing money, they need funds from somewhere to run their business. They issued 12 million of capital stock in 2018, 2.7 million in 2019, and 118 million in 2020. So every time a company issues capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They also added a lot of debt in 2019 and 2020, 21 million total. They paid down about 4.5 million in those two years. Let's look at the capital structure, 214 million of equity, 23 million of debt. They're 90% equity, 10% debt. Their net debt is negative 60 million. So they could pay down all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $60 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 7.75% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven. That's 4.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.7 billion. We divide that by 195 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1365. They're trading at 694, so they're trading at a 49% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. The way I estimated their future free cash flows is I projected they would have $2 billion of sales in 2027 and they would have about 213 million of free cash flow that year. That's based off of the company's projections, the entire telehealth market, and the way its competitors are growing. The free cash flows prior to 2027 just backed into that 213 million. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at $33 a share. They're saying the stock is 79% undervalued. This top chart is a stock price since it started trading. So you could see it was pretty flat for a while. 
then the price was really driven up the past year. This is the stock price the last year. So at one point it was really driven up. Then it's been pretty flat after that. Usually when a stock price is driven up quickly, we do see a decline at some point. But the decline has been pretty minimal for this stock. It looks like it peaked at about 825 a share and it has come down from there. They have a beta of 1.24, so the stock moves a little more than the market. The stock has gone up 155% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 41%. The 52-week low was 250, the high was $10. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 1 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 195 million shares outstanding, 165 million are on float, 6% are held by institutions, and 3% of the shares are shorted. In the past 90 days, this stock has gone down 20%, while its industry went down 1%, and the market went up 6%. But in the past year, this stock has done really well, up 145%, its industry up 40%, and the market 42%. In the past three years, this stock is up over 1,200%. It's industry 43% and the market 29%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 183%. It's industry 107% and the market 14%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 53%. It's industry to grow 18% and the market 6%. In the past five years, their annual earnings decreased 43%. It's industry increased 15% and the market 13%. In the past year, their earnings decreased 3%, its industry increased 34%, and the market 13%. The biggest shareholder is the founder at 6.25%, then Ka Xing Li at 5.4%, then a company at 3.3%, Manulife at 1.8%, then Arjun Kumar at 1.5%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Their price to sales is 20.7, so investors are paying $21 for $1 revenue. That's much worse than the market median average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 6.3, which is between the market median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 214 million of equity, 78 million of tangible equity, since they have 136 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative return on invested capital, negative interest coverage ratio, and negative ROE. They have a high current ratio at 4.2, so they can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are mainly cash of 83 million and 8 million are receivables. They do seem to be well capitalized. They only had negative $4 million of free cash flow. They have $72 million of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So they have $67 million of funding. So it looks like they can get through the next year or two without taking on any more debt or diluting their stock. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on DeVita, Extendicare, and Sienna. All in the same industry as Well. And if Well has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So it looks like they're worse than all the price multiples. They do have a really high current ratio. They have a negative ROE. The other companies are positive. They are lower in debt than the average. They are the second largest company on this list, but much smaller than DeVita and they don't pay a dividend, two of the four companies do. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 49% discount, but the telehealth industry is a really big market. If they can get their share of that market, this company can do really well. And they are doing a good job at growing their revenue. As long as they can keep doing that and maybe acquire a few businesses, they should be a big player in this market in years to come. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratios 2 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.